Next up is Susan Lilly. Susan Lilly is a Florida native. Her poetry and nonfiction have appeared in American Poetry Review, Gulf Coast, Poet Lore, The Southern Review, Drunken Boat, and elsewhere. Her two chapbooks are Night Windows and Satellite Beach. She is a past winner of the Rita Dove Poetry Award and has held a State of Florida Indiv Individual Arts Fellowship. She has taught at the University of Central Florida and Rollins College and currently teaches literature and writing at Trinity Preparatory School in Central Florida. Susan is currently serving as the city of Orlando's first poet laureate. And speaking of laureates, the former two-time United States poet laureate, Billy Collins, says, Susan Lilly's clear speaking voice combines with her knack for striking images and metaphors to create a tone that is both intimate and inventive. Tasked with translating Susan's voice, images, and tone into music are Mark Pizchek, Tim Stolman, and Doug Matthews. Let's welcome them all. Just let me say that there are three different poems involved. Um, the first piece is um, Tim Stolman's beautiful composition. Um, the second piece will be with Mark and Doug playing with me. It's, it's very cool. I don't know if I'll ever have a chance to like be with musicians like this on the stage again. I'm really excited. Um, anyway, so you're going to hear um, two, a couple of complete poems, uh, three complete ones, but then there's a few um, bits that are part of the soundtrack from other poems, so don't be shocked when you hear my voice not coming out of me. It's a little weird, but... <laughs> yeah. So, I'm a Florida girl, so naturally there's going to be a lot of Florida stuff in these poems. So, okay, ready. Mating season at the botanical garden. When we pass the serious birders on our morning ramble, we tighten the leash, our collie too eager to love. They tramp along with binoculars and notebooks, eyes ransacking the trees for a mating pair of barred owls. They give wagging Angus the imperious side eye. He is a lesser being than blue herons and egrets. The fog lingers, ragged veils in the cypress fringe. From a laurel oak, dozens of birds disperse in panic, mockingbirds and blue jays flying for their lives. Everyone looks up. A solitary hawk emerges from the now silent branches and sweeps a casual figure eight, taking his time with the vacant air to land at the top of a lightning-torched pine, a doomed rodent wriggling in his talons. A muffled shriek redirects us to a pair of young human lovers, curled on a blanket on the dewy grass beside the butterfly garden. Have they been here all night? I give them the same look the birders give the dog. But you reach for my hand, and I see you soften in the light years between us and this ancient spring sun. I wonder if I'm equipped to take love with me into old age.
The kids sit up and yawn, their damp t-shirts covered with moving dots of light, rays filtered through cypress, the branches waving overhead like the green hand of Venus. Thanks, Tim. In mating season, the last wakeful moment swells, cracks open just enough that I can see the past, a movie always running late at night, reel after lonely reel. Panning my old school, I see a stone bench where a boy spits on my mattress skirt to see if it bleeds. A blurry man walks on the moon, dense fruit so swollen and golden the church steeple could touch it. A drive-in movie screen flickers with its favorite Bible epic. In the third row, the neighbor girls and I spill ourselves out of a station wagon, barefoot in nightgown, twirling the dance of the seven veils, an asphalt still warm from the forgotten day. A long take dwells on my dead brother's favorite camphor tree, his ghost young and dreaming in the low branches, a white Mustang parked in lover's lane with only the peacocks watching, 
their descendants now lost in the suburbs, crying all night. Across town, my parents dressed themselves up as beatniks for a Halloween party. I'm surprised, my seventh grade daughter said over dinner when I failed quizzing her for the big map of Eastern Europe test, that you have gotten through life so far. You hardly know anything. The maps were different when I learned this shit, little madam. I should have said. I did say, well, I have too much to think about, so don't crack that ponytail whip at me. Over the years, she's gotten much nicer. Not so the world. If only a divine mother, bigger than all of us, including stupid, greedy men in impossibly high places, could come kick some CGI level ass and throw these hollow, gas-filled egos to the crocodiles and sharks. We need to find our female deity of love and rage, come back from long exile, a disciplinarian for truth, measuring stick in hand, taking no prisoners, casting them out left and right, eyes full of fire and tears. Let's face it, those moldy macho heroes have lost their edge. So much preening and look at me. Bring forth the furious goddess with no fucks to give. We are waiting. In the meantime, we'll do the job ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> 